Okay, everyone, this is Tony from Financial Juice and Macro Ace. Just wanted to run through with you guys the understanding of how to use the ranges and deviations sheet, what it means, and then, of course, and then, of course, any other questions that you guys do have, then do feel free to ask those in the comment section and I'll try and answer them as best as I can. But what would, would probably be best to do is to send me an email at tony at financialjuice.com and I'll put it up uh, in the in the description box for you to have a look at. So first of all, what do the numbers and brackets mean? So here, if we're looking at the S&P 500, uh, this is looking at the, this first figure here is looking at the initial market reaction going to the wick of the candle, okay? And the, all on a one minute chart, this data shows you that there was 127 ticks towards the upside off of the back of the data. This figure in black brackets shows you the movement 10 minutes after the release had occurred. And we can see that here there was, we were still above where we were prior to the release. But in the black brackets, we're looking at where the chart ended up 10 minutes after the release going to the end of the candle rather than the wick. The reason why I look at the wick of the candle for the initial market reaction is to capture the entire move then of that initial volatility that you get. So here in the black brackets, as said, after about 10 minutes of trading, there was 116 ticks towards the upside. So a little bit of a pullback from the initial market reaction, but still above the prior uh, level to still above the uh, prior level to the release. And as with the black brackets, the same applies to the blue brackets here. So after 30 minutes of trading, okay, again, going to the end of the candle, this time we were up by 145 ticks compared to the, from the prior, from prior to the release, uh, we were up 145 ticks. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. You have your initial market reaction here, then you're uh, going to the wick of the candle. The figure in black brackets is a movement 10 minutes after the release had occurred, uh, going to the end of the candle. And then the figure in blue brackets is the movement 30 minutes after the release had occurred in total. So just so nobody gets confused, this doesn't mean that there was 116 ticks more that had been added on to the S&P uh, after that data had occurred. Again, it's just showing you the total move from the initial market reaction or from uh, point zero to 10 minutes after the release, where did the chart end up? And the same with the, with the blue brackets as well. So the next point then, which is what some people might get confused by, is where they've seen this here where they've seen a bracket with a word in, and then it means then they see a blue bracket with no words in. So as displayed here, okay, you have the if in the brackets, okay, you see the word up or down, that means that there's been a reversal of the prior reaction that I had, that I had, uh, that we had uh, put in, okay. So initially here, we had seen 82 ticks towards the downside, going to the wick of the candle. Then after 10 minutes, we'd actually seen a reversal of that downward trend. And now we're up by 80 ticks compared to, uh, the, compared to prior to the uh, release. Okay. Now, if you don't see a word in brackets, that means it's it still hasn't uh, gone back to the prior level of the compared to the prior uh, reaction. So what do I mean by that? So here we had, so I said you had seen the initial move uh, down, 82 ticks down, and then we reversed that at downward trend, and then we were up by 80 ticks. And then here, we were still up, but the total move after 30 minutes of the release we are up by 42 ticks. So hopefully that makes sense. I'll go over that again. 
So here we have 82 ticks towards the downside as the initial market reaction. After about 10 minutes of trading, the total move was we were up by 80 ticks. Then 30 minutes later, the total move from the beginning of the release to 30 minutes was 42 ticks or about 42 ticks uh, towards uh, the upside. Sometimes you might get it where if you had seen it, where you might see a bit of a, a chop or a whip that has occurred as, as this example here. So this should clarify what I mean by the reversal of the prior reaction that you'd seen in, in the other bracket or before the bracket. So here on August the 10th, 2023, there was 66 ticks towards the upside of the initial mark reaction. Then after 10 minutes of trading, we had reversed that move towards the upside and I were actually now down in total by 24 ticks uh, from the from the beginning of the release. Then after about 30 minutes, then we reversed the prior market reaction again, uh, prior, prior market reaction of, after 10 minutes, and we we're up by 39 ticks towards the upside after about 30 minutes of the release. So that, hopefully that's kind of cleared that up for you. And that's the same, not just for the uh, equity indexes or equity, equity indices, but also for any other asset that we have uh, on the Excel, on the Google sheet that, that we have here. Okay. So that's the first thing that I kind of wanted to get out of the way with because that's caused uh, some people some confusion as to how that works. But let's talk about how the rest of this, sh this uh, sheet works. And uh, you can see where the, you have the date of when the economic release had occurred. Uh, let's go to more the more latest, uh, newer ones here. Uh, here we have the prior figure for an economic release, the forecast of what it was, and then what the actual deviation was. So of course, what we're doing is we're we're minusing we're, we're minusing the forecast from the actual figure to get the total deviation uh, of what the actual uh, release was, or what the actual deviation was. Now. That goes across so that we just highlight the main releases for the if there's a stack of them and put them into uh, this uh, this area here uh, for that set date. The way that people can use it and the way I, I use it myself as well is to kind of gauge what sort of a deviation or how much of a deviation should I look for on these economic releases for then to me for for then uh, me to be able to put on a uh, a trade or whether to trade it or or not at all so if we look here uh, in the past where the where last the last time around what we had seen with the cpi data where it was weaker than expected overall by 0.1 percent uh, we'd seen about 126 127 ticks towards the upside off of the back of the data for the s p nq uh what 719 ticks which was a stronger market reaction compared to last time around uh, off the back of that data then i can gauge okay when there is data that is when you see data or all the bits of data that see a deviation going in one direction then that would be an, an opportunity then that that could be presented to me again even if here where one bit of data um has seen some uh the if there was one uh bit of data that had seen a bit of a deviation and then I could say okay if the rest of the data was in line with expectation but one data point st stood out that could be enough for me to take a trade uh, to actually buy up the NQ. Again as an example uh, you can figure you can kind of figure out what you want to do make your own choice with this. This is not advice this is just showing you the historical it's giving you a, a historical reference of what has happened in the past and how strong were the market reactions to the deviations then for the economic release. And here, for example, where you had seen 0.1% deviation uh, towards uh, the upside for, for some of the releases, but there's one release that was as expected. Again, it's also about what the expectation was for the release as well. Were markets looking for a bigger deviation? And if they were, then that could explain uh, why that there was a bit more of a choppy market reaction that we had seen from uh, the equity indexes and also uh, the other currency pairs uh, as well. With the ranges, this just shows you what the high and low estimates are 
for each of the economic releases according to what analysts are expecting. And to the right hand side here with the deviations, you can see how much of uh, the de well, what is the deviation then that uh, economists and analysts are looking for then based off of the high and low figures compared to the forecast figure. So you have everything that you kind of need to prepare yourself for the economic release in seeing how big the market reaction was. And then just the final thing that I wanted to show you is this bit where it says sentiment. So if there has been a change in sentiment for a central bank off of the back of an economic release, but more importantly, from a rate statement or a rate decision that has occurred or has been released, then you'll see in this column the sentiment of what then caused the market to move in the way that it did. And what is the sentiment then, or what is the pricing for that central bank later on? Uh, what, what is expected for them to do later on in the future, whether to hike or slow down rates, or maybe that there is a bigger chance of a rate hike occurring and vice versa. So all of this information together is very useful then to understand, especially for interest rate decisions, what was the sentiment last time round? And if the same thing happens again, what could then happen to, to the markets?